the game's showcase problem, also known as how consoles put the bar so low, it's not even funny anymore. So I feel like we have a video game showcase problem in this industry, and it's right now where we're feeling the pain most of no E3 being a thing. Now, I it's also called the race to the bottom at this point. I do think some people look at the E3 era with rose tinted glasses. I mean, for a lot of people working in games, myself especially, this was the North Star. This is what you worked toward was to make it to E3. And when I got there in 20, E3 sucks. E3 was never good. E3 was that show where all the games got presented, and if you were bored, you were watching it, but most people were just waiting for, like, one or two announcements. E3 being gone is not even a bad thing, in my opinion, in the slightest. It has made things easier for consumers, in my opinion, and I think that's good. 16. It was one of the most validating things I've done my entire life. I just couldn't believe I had made it. There was a status to E3, and as they gradually opened it up to the public more, more and more people could get in. It wasn't such an exclusive thing, so many people could realize that dream. But what E3 really symbolized... Oh my god, this sounds like um, the act man's monologue about how Twitter was good, because when only special people had blue check marks, then you could tell who are the people you'd actually need to listen to. Holy man, that is such an arrogant thing to say. It was a week of just constant game announcements. You see, stuff like this, mentalities and views like this is why Epstein's Island was a success. And everyone was competing for airtime, for headspace, and it was easy to miss big game announcements because of how much was happening. And I also think some people forget that back then we did get our duds of showcases and duds of announcements. But over the last, I'd say, almost a decade now, we've seen a dramatic transformation in how video game showcases are handled. Really following the path that Nintendo walked in with their Direct. Now we have State of Plays. Now we have Developer Directs. Now we have Summer Showcases. We have Summer Games Fest. Now we have the Ubisoft Forward. We have all these and now we have a lot of youtubers that just summarize this crap because that's easier companies doing their own things on their own time because the business has grown and a lot of these companies don't want to share the space with other companies and great looking games that may steal some hype or some attention away from the thing they've spent years on so from actually this is false the business has not grown in that sense at all in fact um, most companies just understood, hey, now, wait a minute, with technology, we can do our own showcases and just post things online. We don't have to spend millions on E3 and just burn money for no reason. From a business side, it makes sense. But from a consumer, if anything, and I just want to make it clear here, that I didn't want this video to come across like a response video to my last upload with the state of play, where I know a lot of people were not thrilled that I was not losing my mind over the state of play. I don't think I was shouting from the rooftops how amazing it was, but- Hey, the state of play was bad, but hey, it was way better than Xbox. It has 50% more better games than Xbox. Xbox has two titles that could be good. I vowed and I forgot what's the other one. PlayStation has a whopping three. You see what I mean when I say the bot has been put pretty low? Yeah. And all the other titles for PlayStation look kind of you know, average at best. Most of them are probably going to be complete shit stains. Hey, but it's it's also still better than Xbox, but, you know, the, the next best game is probably Voke Indiana Jones that's going to be an absolute disaster. I do notice in that video and in the comments, there is this growing fatigue, this growing sense of irritation with these tiny bite-sized showcases and that our expectations are being geared lower and lower where there was a time with E3 that they could go sky high and anything could happen. At the same time, I would say leak culture has really killed a lot of those hype announcements. The fact that we know about like another Doom, the potential showing of a perfect dark, I think these real big wow moments uh, does take some wind out of the sails of these showcases and there's no real getting around that. We can talk about that separately, but to me, the real problem lies in the fact of how showcases are structured even to the point that we have big summer showcases like Summer Games Fest, which you can usually count on 
for a number of big announcements and big reveals, Jeff Keighley never heard about Summer Game Fest. He's saying right now that you shouldn't expect any real big game reveals. And that already kind of confirms a sort of mid showcase going in as someone who can gear their expectations properly and go, hey, you know what? Let's just see updates on current games. Cool. But we do see this more and more and more. And it's because right now coming up, we just had the state of play. Then you have Summer Games Fest. Then you have the Xbox Showcase. You have Ubisoft Forward. You have all these companies that are making like Ubisoft Forward? Ubisoft is going backwards. Third-party marketing deals. Maybe some games are going to show up on the Xbox Showcase when they could have shown up over on Jeff Keighley's stage. You have the Nintendo Direct, which is also going to nab up some partners of their own. And so everyone's trying to take bites of the same pie, and that's leading to very little being left. And so all these big reveals that used to be crammed in one to two showcases are now spread out across five, six, and many people don't have time for it. That's why... I personally always make those showcase reaction videos, not just only because I want to talk about what I saw and what I thought was cool or what I didn't like, but also because I notice more and more people want those videos because they don't want to watch these showcases because no one has the time or the patience or the energy for the crap that's being thrown out there. So I just wanted to talk about that. I wanted to talk about the showcase situation and where we're at in this industry. Talk about what Jeff Keighley said about the upcoming Summer Games Fest. So Let's get into it. Why did Jeff Keighley matter again? I, I remember the name being thrown around, but why, why, why does he matter? Can someone please explain? I want to keep our track here on Summer Games Fest because this idea was fully fortified after a weekend of kind of spinning my wheels Keighley. on it. When this clip of Jeff Keighley came out, and we have the quote here from Rock. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, ah, Jeff Keighley is a Canadian video game journalist and television personality best known for his role uh, as the host of so he's a literal nobody what what why am i so supposed to be excited for a literal nobody a fucking journal of all things someone who probably failed to be a political pun uh, and i'm supposed to be excited for this guy the hell rock paper shotgun who says, during the session, Keeley confirmed that a lot of games wouldn't be on the show. Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake Eater, aka the MGS3 remake, mm. will not be shown. Kingdom Hearts 4 is also off the table, as is The Wolf Among Us 2. And I oh, The Wolf Among Us. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Man, it's been, it's been forever. So it's been probably more than 10 years since The Wolf Among Us came out. Or should we expect anything about the upcoming Bioshock-like shooter Judas? nor anything on future Five Nights at Freddy's games. Keeley contrasted the Summer Games Fest with its other big shows, the Game Awards, which- I'm gonna reframe saying anything about Five Nights at Freddy's because I'm allergic to pipe booms. It's normally the place for reveals, he says. The Game Awards usually has a lot of big surprises. We're thankful for those and big new reveals. This Summer Games Fest is largely focused on announced stuff. This isn't the first time we've heard Keeley talk about this before. And I do think there is a place for a showcase to have announced stuff. But some people I saw in response to this news is going, why say any of this at all? And I think it's because Keeley's been very guilty in the past of overhyping his showcases or teasing and then disappointing. And so continuing on here. Oh, really? People overhype their showcases? as well. Man. Oh, man. Jeff, Jeff Keeley sure is special in that one. He says there are definitely things that are being announced, but this is not a show that has a lot of like coming in 2026 or 2027 or teasers for games that are years and years out. That's generally what I would say in the terms of expectation setting. The article goes on to mention a lot of what I said were how a lot of these events have dissolved and in turn, a lot of people aren't going to Jeff Keighley. But Keeley did highlight some games that would make an appearance, however, including Dino Punching, Hunt Em Up, Monster Hunter Wilds, Medieval RPG. Oh, wait, Monster Hunter Wilds. I forgot about that. Oh no, that was one of the three games that uh, that that were good. Okay, my my bad. Kingdom Come Two Deliverance and Metaphor Refantasio, the upcoming fantasy JRPG from the creators of Persona. That's the other thing I found mm. kind of strange is there was always a lot of secrecy around these showcases. You know, keeping things close to the chest, but more and more it's becoming, as I talked about with the Game Awards, very blatant marketing focused shows. And that's always been the case. These showcases have always been put on for marketing, for creating buzz, for creating hype, at the same time as also intriguing potential investors. Uh, but now it's becoming more and more obvious when we're pre-announcing things at a showcase, which used to be like a very much a sacred gaming ritual. Like for me with E3, I always remember during the summer, I would invite my friends over. We get like soda, 
pizza. We'd park it on the couch in my basement. And on Spike TV, we would watch a lot of the E3 showcases. I would sit there with my laptop open. I'd live tweet the event because I thought everyone cared about what I had to say for some reason and didn't just make a video about it. I decided to live tweet the whole thing. And I just remember going into those so blind. And that was during a time where I worked in the industry. So I was always keyed in on leaks and rumors. But that kind of transitions to the other thing that has created a bit of a game showcase issue. Well, that explains why he's such an absolute chill, though. So, for example, leaks and rumors were surrounding the state of play. And that was something that was being built up as a, quote, PlayStation showcase from leaks and rumors, but was announced as a state of play, which to me gauged my expectations as this will be something smaller. Now, state of play is definitely capable of more, but that's when I see that, I immediately go, okay, this is going to be a smaller thing. This isn't going to be like a PlayStation showcase where I've certainly voiced my disappointment with the last two where I think PlayStation's put on some real duds. Nonetheless, there's something to be said about the, and I, by the way, I, I take full ownership that I'll cover these leaks when they're out, but I'm not breaking the leaks myself, but that these leaks do hurt the excitement around the showcase. I know for the state of play, the entire list leaked. And for me, at least, I'm just saying, announcements like Dynasty Warriors Origins, would have been a pretty big deal because I thought that game looked sick and maybe I would have hit harder if I didn't already see the name on a list and kind of get in my head like, oh, I might see Dynasty Warriors today. You know, we have... That is a point. Hype honestly does matter a lot at the end of the day. But, you know, what matters more is actually having good games in the first place. Dynasty Warriors could be a big success. It depends on how they do it, but, you know. Leakers like Midori, who originally was covering things like Sega going out into now Square Enix and even Nintendo territory. And they've been talking a lot about, say, Dragon Quest and how what was originally an HD 2D remake of Dragon Quest 3 has now spanned into a trilogy. And like that would have been a really cool reveal to have found out on my own. But now you start to put the pieces together. Oh, there's a connection to Nintendo. OK, so this is probably going to be at the Nintendo Direct. And so that kind of takes away a bit of the surprise and the excitement of, oh, right, I forgot I was excited about this game, right? Because that goes back to now the Summer Games Fest, where for me at least, I don't mind showcases based around things I already know because there are announcements from years ago. I think of like the Bioshock game from Cloud Chamber. I've wanted to see that one for a while. Will it look good or not? Who knows? But that's been announced for a while. So that showing up is a kind of meaningful reveal in a sense, even if it's already been announced. So there is a place for that. And hearing showcases only about announced things doesn't really kill my excitement because I'm still excited for the games at the end of the day. But when I see lists and leaks and then you start to be able to check things off the list, it gives the showcase. Yeah, it's cool when you have some kind of big event to be excited for, you know, the hype again. The hype had so much though, honestly. But after the hype wears down, the only the, the only is it good or bad part is going to matter. So again, not the biggest thing, but you know, if you want to be excited for hype for an event, that's fine. Okay, that's completely understandable. Announcements and stuff like that is good. Even though the bad part of this, uh, of it, excitement and stuff like that is the reason why we end up buying Ubisoft. Hey, play three days in advance for only 50 more dollars, you piece of shit. Yeah, not great times, but you know, at least it's something technically, right? This is less room to surprise and excite you. To me personally, if I'm looking at the general spectrum of showcases over the last few years, who's put on the biggest bangers? I think it's been Xbox. I think their last two summer showcases, especially last year's, was phenomenal. Xbox has no games, so how the hell did they actually manage to pull that off? Again, the only the most blatant, unreasonable Xbox super fanboys are going to say Xbox has actually games to play on it. Again, we, I laugh every single time I see the list of Xbox's most popular games and how it's complete fucking shit. And how games that should be up there aren't up there because no one wants to play them on Xbox because they can play them on PC or whatever else. Again, it's like, you, you can cope all you want, Super Xbox fans, but the reality is very simple. No one is suggest suggesting anyone buy Xbox un unless there's like that specific game that you want to play on it. Otherwise, you just buy PlayStation because it has more games. Everyone is going to tell you that, okay? You can cope and seed, cry me a fucking river all you want. 
but that's just reality xbox doesn't have anything to offer so how i have their showcases been successful i don't know then again playstation's also garbage so you know i i, I mean again uh, it's a race to the bottom and it's showing um, last year's showcase was literally one of the best showcases i've ever seen and i have based on things i'm hearing really high expectations for this year's show i think it's going to be another absolute home run and i'm very excited because they have a lot of games well it wasn't the last uh last year's showcase that it was a, such an amazing home run i have no idea probably lies and nothing i mean we're talking about starfield good the take here so you know and so i think they're and 76 is a masterpiece so well okay those not not exactly the words but th that's the direction so yeah this is kind of interesting going to kill it i think they're going to deliver probably the best showcase again this year we'll see of course i don't want to get too ahead of myself but i think with what's lining up and what deals they have done this should be a really good one for them but outside of that i don't feel like anyone else is really living up to the summer showcase status quo if you catch my drift like we are admittedly getting diminishing returns and i think part of it is gauging expectations like for example, again, I don't want this to come across like a response, but just for added clarity, like the reason I didn't lose my mind over state of play is I went, okay, it's about barely half an hour. Uh, this is a state of play, so it's going to be this short little thing. A couple of games going to be thrown in here. We already know PSVR 2 titles are going to be. Wait, what? So state of play is bad because it's only 30 minutes? So well, what? A show that's three days long is automatically the best thing in the whole fucking universe? Is that the take here? No, how long something is doesn't actually necessarily always gauge how good it is. I actually want the, I actually want my game showcases being pre, you know, shortened to the point and to the core of the conversation. I don't want someone announcing, and here's Jeff Bezos explaining to you how making this game was super fun for him and his team he and his team can go find a noose okay i literally could not care less okay i just want to see the gameplay i want to see the trailer i want to see i want to see the summary what's the game supposed to be ab about and all of the shit that actually matters not some kind of a 50 minute long uh, yap session about someone who needs to fucking lie about how great it is to work at company xbox or company whatever okay i'm completely disinterested in all of that here they kind of gave us a briefing on other playstation titles there i didn't hate certain games as much as other people there are certain ones like concord that i've gotten more context on i have to admit not as crazy about it as i was at first but i didn't think it looked awful at first i wasn't like i was hyping it up but point being is i think expectation setting is really important but when you mix that in with leaks and kind of the diminishing returns the summer showcases or really just showcases in general can't really help themselves and so then you move down the year a little bit more and jeff Keeley's kind of pointing to things like hey the game awards like that's where we do big reveals but the problem with the game awards at least last year and i was very loud very vocal about it on twitter also obviously everyone is less excited about game show y game show x game show z because most games currently are just bad again it's a race to the bottom the fact that xbox has two games playstation has three is pathetic absolutely pathetic we would i would expect i remember previous years where you where you watched the showcase and you were like oh wow like seven games here are looking fire absolutely my boy and you know others kind of look fine and whatnot but now it's like trash 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 oh wo garbage trash wo garbage again oh i can see uh, i can see this and that oh this like the highlight is when you find something that you instantaneously cannot just throw out into the trash can because it doesn't look garbage okay because it's not already rotten that that's a win nowadays obviously people are not going to be excited for when something that's not rotten to its core is a win and on my youtube channel was how unacceptable i thought it was how that was handled how it was just blatant marketing and you were shoving devs off the stage it was it was completely unacceptable 
god that they're shoving devs off the stage fuck them so now the spot for announcements is also the most ad -loaded. you're making a video game not trying to be a goddamn rock star place by go I listen to nickel back in your free time it's necessity of running the business it's a very vicious cycle that goes round and round. And I don't know if there's really a way out of it. And I don't know if there's a solution. That's kind of not the point of the video, but it's more to spot like the issue that's here, which is the solution is to make more remakes. <laughs> that's the solution. <laughs> it's to make more remakes and then vocify them by adding trans characters and then to saying everyone who's very a man of this character was never trans and then calling them a bigot and you're wrong no this character was always that you you schmuck ah oh, it's it's beautiful what what a great system anyway gaming showcases suck it is what it is that was maddie plays thanks for watching bye